not alone. Everybody that gets up here feels that way. Everybody, even people that represent everybody. Everybody. He's a talker, but you exist. Everybody does. Nobody exists from that that feeling. Praise God, everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let us praise God this morning. Let us give God all our praise, for he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He deserves our praise. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. If we could just bow our heads and get ourselves together for this morning and pray to God. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for you are a wonderful God. Oh, Father God, we ask that your presence be here today, this morning. May your spirit, Father God, touch us. May your spirit, Father God, align with our hearts and minds, Lord Jesus, that when pastor began to preach your word today, Father God, that it will become like in an alignment, Father God, with the sun as the moon aligned with the sun. That it begin to cast a shadow on the earth, O oh Lord Jesus. So may your angels, O oh Father God, cast the shadow of your love here in this church this morning. That we begin to say hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And may your morning dew be the lifter of our spirits. So we forever give you praise and glory and honor for the great and magnificent God you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. We'll now have the reading of the word, and if you could please stand. That will be Mark 10, 46 to 52. NIV, that is Mark 10, 46 to 52 NIV. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimus, which means the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up. On your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. The word of the Lord. Amen. We'll now have our hymn of celebration. If we could just continue to stand and worship with them. There's not a friend. There's not a friend.
There's not a friend like Jesus, right? Amen. We'll now have, it's prayer time in the sanctuary. We'll have Deaconess Erica Peters come up, and following that will be the Agape worship team. Amen. As we gather for prayer this morning, we want to remember John McHoney, the husband of Bumsey that we call her. We also want to remember those on their beds of affliction, Connie Rambo, and this morning I found out that Chris Gibson lost a family member, and David Smith, one of our deacons, lost his brother. We also pray this morning for our team in Kenya, and pray God's blessings upon them as they serve God and serve the wonderful people there. Take a moment this morning and just give God thanks. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you today, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for the sunshine. Thank you for the birds that chirp. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for our pastor and Lady Kwan, Lord. We want to pray that you continue to watch over them and keep them, Lord, keep their families safe. Heavenly Father, Pastor has mention some names that are on their beds of affliction. Lord, we pray for them, Lord. We pray that, pray healing over their bodies, Lord. We pray that you walk down the hospital hallways. We pray that you walk into those operating rooms, Lord. We pray that you walk into those retirement homes, Lord. Nursing homes, Lord. Hospice centers. Lord, we pray that you be with those that have lost loved ones lost friends, lost family, lost people they didn't even know, but it impacted them, Lord. Lord, we pray for the caregivers. We pray for those that need to be on point, even when they are not feeling at their sharpest, Lord. Lord, we pray for this world, Lord. We pray for each and every corner of the world. So much is going on, Lord. There's so much warfare. There is just so much spiritual warfare for it. Lord, you just, we just pray that you just be with us, Lord. Be with us every second of the day, Lord. Walk with us. Guide us, protect us from seen and unseen dangers, Lord. Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we pray that you forgive us for anything we may have said, done, thought, or felt, Lord, that was not pleasing to you, Lord. Wrap us in your arms. Keep us. We pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Okay, uh, we will now have the uh, welcome and greeting time. And that will be, yes, right here, <laughs> Sister Ava Thompson. Thank you. Let's give her a little hand and make it comfortable, everybody. <laughs> what? I thought it was going to be super cold like it was yesterday. I was wrong. <laughs> and I'm excited about that. Okay. Will all visitors please stand and remain standing? We're glad to see you. The ushers will hand you a welcome packet. Please fill out the form and put it in the offering basket so we can connect with you. On behalf of Pastor Kwan and Assistant Pastor Tripline, who was on a mission trip this week, our First Lady Kwan, our Bethlehem family, we welcome you to the House of Bread. We are a Christ-centered, multicultural church where we believe and practice loving God and serving people. We're delighted that you are here with us today. We hope to see you again maybe in Sunday Bible School. It's at 9 o'clock. Wednesdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Then 6.30 prayer service is before the 7 o'clock Bible study. We have Church Without Walls every day at 6 a.m. so you can start your day right. And that's just a few of our favorite things you can come and be a part of. We got a lot of stuff happening and it's all for the glory of God. So bottom line, we want you to experience and enjoy Jesus today. So sit back, soak in the word, and praise the Lord with us this Sunday. And we'll see you back again. Amen. We thank God for that warm welcome for brother and sister. Guests give God praise this morning. On Friday, we have been invited to Congregation Beth Ward as Rabbi Gregory Marks will be retiring. Congregation Bethel has been a blessing to Bethlehem for these many years, and we're grateful to God for Rabbi Marks and his wife, Lori. The service is 7 o'clock, the Shabbat service. It was because of Rabbi Marks and Congregation Bethel that we have purchased this facility since 2006, and I have been privileged to do the Shabbat service. He's been a friend and a brother in the Lord and I'm grateful to God for him and for his family. At the same time, we would also ask that this service, you might remain for the anointing of oil, which is a symbol of God's power and presence in our lives. Also would ask that you would keep in prayer those on our mission field, those who are now in Kenya. Make sure you get a copy of the Philadelphia Tribune and honor God as we continue to serve God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. The men are cooking. Uh, would you just come and say a word one minute about the men are cooking? And I want you to know, if you've never tasted magnificent tuna, you're in for a blessing. That's my favorite dish. I actually don't need this, but God morning and good morning to our Bethlehem Saints. We are inviting everybody out to the Bethlehem Men of Cooking, Saturday, May 11th, right before Mother's Day. And all the brothers, come on now. When God has blessed you with culinary skills, you got to share it with us. Okay, and, and I've just been blessed today. Reverend Lassiter's got a brisket and mac and cheese sign. Come on now. Right. Pastor's Magnificent Tuna, also one of yeah. my deacon brothers. Come on now. He just added a flounder to the menu. So we got to, you got to come out. The main thing for me is fellowship 
Okay, you don't know somebody until you spend time with somebody. Come on. Tickets are $25. I'll be out. I've got the, the parishes here to sign people up. Montel, some of my deacon brothers. So please, from 2 to 5, May 12th, come out and fellowship with your Bethlehem family. Thank you. And I also want to provide an opportunity for one of our deaconess to share for a minute the upcoming prayer, breakfast, lunch, brunch. Good morning. So the deaconesses are having a pre-Mother's Day brunch, breakfast, lunch, <laughs> on Saturday, May the 4th. And we are selling tickets um, in the the hallway after service so please come and buy a ticket it's going to be a really nice brunch and um, this is an initiative that we do every year to collect um, donations for the education and scholarship ministry and we give scholarships to uh, Bethlehem students and to other students so please buy your ticket and we look forward to seeing you there Amen. I also want to say, as we have been blessed by God to move here in 2006, we want to pay off our mortgage. Those 19 founders left us a legacy, and we want to do that. So there's a wall right outside the church. As you come in, the amount is $1,000, 2,500, and 5,000, and there's no distinction. So whatever you give, there's no categories. You can just give 1,000 if that's what God's placed in your heart. We want to do that. Anyone notice my shirt? Yeah. Fire, fire, fire. Anybody notice my sneaks? Fire, fire, fire. Listen to this so you can get, you can't get the sneaks, but you can get the shirt. This is Pastor Kwan. I'm on fire for the Lord and pray that Bethlehem is on fire for the Lord, that you would invite somebody to join us because we're on fire for the Lord. Make sure you get one of these T-shirts, Bethlehem on fire for the Lord. And then in the back, it simply says, join us. Invite somebody to join us. On Friday, praise God, I finished my last week, last day of this 12 weeks of physical therapy. I rang the bell. Bam, bam, bam. Praise God. The shirts are $15. We're looking forward to a wonderful opportunity to share the word of God, to let others know that we have zeal, enthusiasm, and we're grateful to God for all he's done for his healing hand. It's no secret to what God can do. What he's done for me, he'll do for others too. Make sure you get one of these t-shirts. And on the third Sunday in May, we're going to come together with our t-shirts and give God praise, inviting folk who have not been here to come back and worship with us. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And praise God, I finished my 12 weeks of physical therapy on Friday. And I'm grateful to God. At the same time, I was going three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, for two hours. The first hour was committed to education, the food we eat, and mental stress and disorder. I must admit that when this experience happened, it caused fear and anxiety in my heart. I was in Abington Hospital for two weeks. They resuscitated me for 10 times. Then I went to Moss for two weeks, had physical therapy at home. And I have discovered more about mental illness because you can be a believer and still be overwhelmed. And so we have a young lady here who has made a commitment, and I thank God for her tenacity, her faith, to be as bold and to be as courageous as she is. So I'm gonna ask that you would come now and share with us this new ministry that we're about to launch. It's so meaningful. Sometimes in the church we don't talk about mental illness, but it's real. Hello, hello. <laughs> Good morning, Bethlehem. My name is Whitney Hallman, and I joined Bethlehem in 2012. And I'll admit, I did get away from church for a while, but God has brought me back to do just this. 
Once again, my name is Whitney Holman. I've been a mental health advocate for several years now. A little over two years ago, I battled with postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety. But I am blessed to say now that I am a survivor. <laughs> with all the off feelings I was have, on top of feeling a load of stress from an incredibly toxic work environment I was in, I knew it was time to be an advocate for those going through some tough times. Nearly one in five adults live with an untreated mental illness. And studies show that people of color have a dramatically higher rate of mental disorders compared to any other ethnic group. It's our community who is lacking and needs the most support. In Bethlehem, it is our duty to stand up for those in need. God has healed me through my perinatal mental health struggles and has called on me to start our new mental health ministry here at Bethlehem. And lastly, so I know some of you may recognize me, but some may not, and that is totally okay. So please, Bethlehem, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Whitney Hallman, leader of our mental health ministry. There will be a table outside the cafe for more details later. Thank you. <laughs> It takes a lot of strength to be able to acknowledge where you've come from. And we thank God for you and for your witness. This month is Autism Month, and we want to receive an offering more than just something we say, love God and serve people. That's who we are. So I'd ask that the second offering would be for autism. We have young people in our church who are going through that. We have parents, and ask that you be as generous as possible. I'm going to ask Reverend. Reverend Lassiter to share with us the litany. And after that, the ushers will come and we will see the house of bread while the offering is being received. Amen. Let's give it up for our worship leader, everybody, while we stand to our feet. She's been doing a great job. Our ministers are in training and they are learning every week how to lead us in worship. So when you see our ministers, I want you to give them the best you got in your amens and your hallelujahs to encourage them because this is a heavy desk, amen? amen? Amen. I'm gonna be reading what's in white. You will all be following me with in yellow. Let us hear what the Lord has to say. It is time to give. Praise the Lord. It is tithing and giving time. Praise to whom does the tithe belong? And who should tithe? And wh why should we tithe? <clears throat> and how much should we tithe? What is God's promise to the tither? And what kind of giver does the Lord love? All together? Amen. Amen. Take your seats. As the deacons move it's in time place, to ushers give. will move forward. Amen. It's time to give. Praise the Lord. And we have so many ways to give. Visit bbcforchrist.org forward slash giving to see all the details. You can click on the purple donate button to give securely on the website. You can sign up for a Realm account and download the Realm Connect app to give. You can text to give. You can give on Cash App and you can give on Tithely. We have so many ways to give and we are grateful to God for the opportunity to give. Hello, welcome to the House of Bread News. I'm Christina Carter here to bring you the upcoming events and announcements of Bethlehem. Tasty Treats Sold, Women's Usher Ministry, Bake Sale, next Sunday, April 21st, after each worship service in the cafe. Sales benefit the education, scholarship, and ministry. Attention all, Real Women Talk, April 23rd, 7 p.m., Compassionate House. Contact Deaconess Erica. Real Men Talk, April 25th, 6 p.m., at the Compassionate House. Please contact Chris Gibson. Reminder to all students and adults, 
Path to Success Career and Job Fair, Saturday, April 27th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the BBC. Contact Deaconess Donna Parker. Vine Sunday School Parents and Guardians, please update your family's information on the BBC website. Friendly reminder, Bethlehem graduating high school seniors and college undergrads. Apply for the 2024 BBC Global Ministries Scholarship and the 2024 BBC Community Service Award. April 30th is the deadline. Purchase tickets for Men Are Cooking, May 11th, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Tickets are $25 and are available in the cafe after each service. Get ready. Bethlehem Vacation Bible School 2024 is vast approaching July 8th through July 12th. We're looking for passionate volunteers to teach our youth. Are you interested? Reach out to Minister Nicole. Clothes for Care is seeking spring and summer clothing for all. Donation drop off Wednesdays, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Contact Grace Lightfoot, Lonnie Davis, and Brenda Hill. For more details pertaining to the events, please visit the BBC website and call the church office. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We believe that God is doing something new and wonderful as we imagine new and exciting ways to do ministry. Thanks for being with us today. Bye. Amen. We do have a second offering. So let our children, will you give these kids a round of applause? They're doing a phenomenal job. Amen. Come on, choir. We have been blessed with our children in Kenya. We have more than 120 children we support on a monthly basis. We have about 18 people who now are in Kenya. I've been privileged to go to Kenya at least five times, and we're grateful to God today. And I'm going to ask that you take a few moments and see this clip of our team that's in Kenya today. Oh, 
We want to thank Madam Emily for having brought us these visitors. Emily Nikani. Where is she? Emily Obedkam, yes. She's seated at the right corner there. That's one lady you know very well. She has brought us all these visitors. It is nice to be here. We welcome all our visitors. Was or come all the way from America to visit us here. Pastor Chip, would you play with you? Come, get dressed. Ah, let's clap our pastor. Chip, play is coming.
experience to go there, and I am grateful to God. Hopefully, the next time I'll be traveling with them. We are blessed today to have a baby to be blessed. I'm going to ask the parents and the godparents to please come to the altar. right here. This is a very sacred moment for you have come to the altar to offer to God the gift that he's given so freely to you. Raising a child requires a great deal of faith, trust in God. Your son will not remember this day, but tell him that you brought him to the altar to ask God's blessings upon him. You have no idea what God has in store for him. And I pray today that you would also rededicate yourself to God so that early on in his life, he will know that God does reign and rule. We're grateful to God that God has blessed you to bring him to the altar. Thank God for godparents, for grandparents, for all those who impact his life for friends, and he will hear you in your home as you speak to one another, the conversations that you have, the prayers that you offer. So make sure that he knows at an early age about the power of prayer. And we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus loves little children, for the Bible tells us so. So I pray today as we present you with this Bible that you will have the opportunity to read it to him and he will know that our Lord and Savior reigns and rules, and that at some point in his life, he will give his life back to Christ. So this morning, I'd ask you to take a moment and just reflect upon what God has in store for you. Be still and know that he's God. Let's see now if he's going to be willing to come into my arms. <laughs> Oops. His full name. Bless Robert Ben. Robert. Blessed. Blessed. Robert. Robert. Ben. Let us play. Gracious God, we thank you for this gift that you've given to these parents. We pray, Lord, you lay your hands upon him. As he grows, he will grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless, O oh God, every phase and facet of his life. May, O oh God, this family be blessed as they raise him in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Lay your hands upon him as only you can. In the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus Christ, do we pray. Amen. It's been a while since I've done this, so I see why he's crying. Let me give him back to his dad, Lord Jesus. Now watch him stop crying. Didn't I tell you? Oh, my goodness. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Let the church say amen. amen. We have a certificate for you as well. And may I see you in the house of worship Sunday after Sunday, giving God praise. To God be the glory. This morning, as our Agape Praise Team prepares to bless us in song, I pray that if you're here this morning and you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you will come at that time. Or perhaps you have received him and you're not connected to the house of God. This is an opportunity for you also to become part of Bethlehem Baptist Church. And yes, it is true, we are a Christ-centered, multicultural church where we love God and serve people. I've said on more than one occasion, we're not a perfect church, I'm not a perfect pastor, but we serve a perfect God. Come on, Agape, bless us. Hallelujah belongs to you. My heart. 
Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, we come to this sacred moment to hear from you through your word. Use me, God, for your glory, that your people might be blessed, encouraged, and strengthened. In the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus Christ, do we pray. I would ask this morning that you would turn in your Bible to the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, verse number 52. There you'll find these words. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and follow Jesus along the road. This morning, I want to share with you from the subject, praising God with fire in my heart. Will you say that with me? Praising God, praising God. With, fire with fire in my heart. You may be seated. This morning, we've come together as a people of faith with fire in our hearts, to give God praise. Anybody here this morning willing to stand and acknowledge God's goodness, God's kindness, God's love, God's mercy? I know I might get in trouble for saying this, but technology is good. When you have the opportunity to watch a service online, it does provide some sort of blessing. But I would argue strongly there's nothing like being in that presence of God with the people of God. There's something about being in the sanctuary, along with brothers and sisters in Christ, that we can come together and praise God. I know also, because I've done it myself, that you could be watching the service online and be preoccupied. I'm not coming down your street. I'm just speaking the truth. The phone rings. You want to get a cup of coffee. Somebody calls you. But here we are this morning in the house of God, hopefully with no distractions, to give God praise. I don't know about you, but... I'm blessed to be here. Amen. And sometimes you don't realize your blessings until you can't come. So I feel like preaching this morning. There were times in the last six or seven months I could not come to worship. But since I'm here this morning, since God's given me another opportunity to gather, not just as a pastor, but more importantly as a child of God, I want God to know I appreciate what he's done what he's doing, and I want to give him praise. Yes. Now, if you choose not to give him praise, that's up to you. But I want God to know, I appreciate. Yes. And again, I don't say that as a pastor. I say that as a man of God. Amen. And I realize I'm here because of God. Amen. Just a few days ago, we were looking at the register in our church facility in the records of our church because we've set aside the third Sunday in May to ask that you'd wear your shirts and we invite people back who have not been here in a while. But when we looked at the list, there are many who have been called home to glory of all ages over the last several years. So the mere fact that you're here this morning is only because of the grace and mercy of God. Amen. Do I have a witness? Yes. Do I have a witness? Anybody here know what I'm talking about? And let me be clear again, it may be repetitious, but let me say that again. My grandmother used to say, you never miss the well till the well goes dry. And you don't know what it is to miss worship until you can't come. But since you're here, since you're here, 
then let's give God some praise. Since you're here, let the Lord know that you're grateful. Since you're here, open your mouth and give God praise. Since you're here, raise your hand. Since you're here, acknowledge God's goodness. Since you're here, don't allow the announcement to get in your way. Our express purpose for being here is to give God glory, to give God praise. And when the Lord has blessed your life, then you are obligated to give him praise. Look at this story. Barnabas' life is in a mess. He's a blind beggar sitting by the roadside seeking help from those who passed him by. For many, he's just a beggar People walk right past him, not even paying attention to him. They just passed him like he had no presence. But Bartimaeus has hope. He may be blind, living in a world all to himself, but he does not give up hope. He still hangs on to the faith and believe in Jesus. Let me stop here for a minute. For we need faith to trust God, faith to believe in God, faith to be trust God, faith to look to him to find the help we need. And we're grateful for family and friends, but there are times that families and friends can only do so much. But the Lord we serve can do all things and do all things well. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Bartimaeus lost his sight, but he did not lose his voice. He was incredible. In spite of being ignored, he opened his mouth and began to ask the Lord to help. He shouts out in a loud voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have you ever been in that situation? Anybody here ever been in a situation where, Lord, I need you. Have mercy on me. And you don't worry about your grammar. You don't worry about who's looking at you, who's talking about you. You know that he's the only one that you can rely on, call on. And so you say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Now say it like you know how to say it because you said it before. Say, Jesus. Jesus. And if you never had to say that, just keep on living. The situation in all of our lives when we will know how to call on the name of the Lord. It's good to have family members, friends who know the Lord, but nothing like knowing the Lord for yourself. Yes. Times when the pastor may not get there, times when the deacons may not get there, times when the deaconess may not get there, times when family members might be preoccupied and may not get there. But the Lord never slumbers nor sleeps. He's always in the midnight hour. Anybody try him in the midnight hour? Early in the morning, late at night. Whatever you're going through, don't lose your faith. And don't lose your praise. You know, we can praise God when things are well. But what about when things are not so well? Do you still have that praise in your heart? Is your fire still burning when things are bleak and dismal? Do you have that fire, 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 the zeal, the enthusiasm? I said this before. There are folk who come to church and they stand at the altar when they're in need. But that's not only the time you ought to come and give God praise. You ought to praise him when things are going well. You don't have to wait until some trouble comes. You don't have to wait until you're down on your last dime. But praise God every opportunity you get. I like to be around praises. Got enough complainers. Be careful who you hang out with. Be around folk who know the Lord. Be around folk who know how to call on the name of the Lord. Be around folk who are encouragers. Be around folk who don't mind telling that the Lord will make a way somehow. Be around folk who know the Lord for themselves. And that can help you as opposed to somebody, but I can't help you and I'm going through something myself. Wait a minute. I need somebody who knows the Lord and knows what God is able to do. I need a prayer partner. I need somebody who's been through something and can tell me that I'm going through, but God brought them through, and he can do it for me too. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Anybody here know what I'm talking about?
Stay away from negative people. Let me say that again. Stay away from negative people. It don't take all that. You know, it's really amazing. Somebody shouting in church, I don't know why they don't sit down. You don't know what they've been going through. So right away, how can you tell somebody to sit down when you have not been there when they have been going through something? Don't criticize somebody else. You don't know what they're going through. But be able to say, I'm with you. I'm praying for you. Act crazy for the Lord. <laughs> when you're in desperate need, desperate people do desperate things. And you know what's amazing? I find it amazing that you can go to a sports event and folk got all kinds of shirts and sneaks on and everything else and they hollering and screaming, you paid money and they standing so you can't even see the game. And you don't tell them to sit down. <laughs> Why you tell somebody in the church when they're praising God to sit down? Some of us don't look like what we've been through. So you can't judge anybody else. They might have on a nice suit, drive a nice car, but you don't know. You don't know. You haven't been there. Just because you dressed up and got a nice car doesn't mean everything's going right. To make matters worse, you may not have the money to pay the bill when a bill comes in. <laughs> you can't go by people's appearance. Well, let me say something else. Don't judge anybody who may not dress like you. Because that may be all they have to wear. This matter of giving God praise is so sh crucial to all of our being. Even though the crowd walked past him, there were those in the crowd who told him to be quiet, shut up. Many rebuked him by telling him to be silent. <laughs> Some of the crowd scolded him. Shut up. But Bartimaeus did not let the insults take him away from giving God praise. He did not let the crowd hinder him Son of David, have mercy on me. And the Lord had mercy on him. When your life is in a mess and you need a miracle, don't let anybody stop you from calling on the name of the Lord. And don't wait, as I said, until the answer comes. We're praising before the answer even comes. Have anticipation that he's going to bring you through. Have anticipation he's going to show up. Have anticipation he's going to bless your life. He's going to bless you and heal you. Have anticipation. And I wish I could say that everybody in the church was on the same accord. Don't, don't look at anybody else. But make sure that you're here for the express purpose of giving God praise. Or oh, the fellowship is good, the agape praise team and choirs are good, and the fellowship and sometimes the food is good, and the friends are fine, but every now and then you gotta move away from that and just say, Lord, I need to be in your presence. And you can be in the presence in the pew. Is he present in your life right now? Do you feel his spirit? Have you gathered this morning just to say, Lord, I thank you? Say, I thank you. I told you before, my grandmother used to give me some money and me and my little smart self. Is this all you have, Nana? Give it back to me. You don't appreciate what I'm giving you. And sometimes the Lord has to take back from us what he's given to us because we don't appreciate what he's done for us. Sometimes he snatches from us the blessings because we have not learned how to say thank you for the little things. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. They may have a nice house, but the fact that you got a house. Come on, somebody talk to me. They might have better clothes than you, but the fact that you got some clothes to put on. So don't be envious about anybody. 
But thank God for everything he's done in your life. You got food on your table. You got clothes on your back. You're here this morning by the grace of God. God has blessed you to be here. So since you're here, give God some real, genuine praise. Thanksgiving. Lord, I love you. I thank you. I praise you. I acknowledge you. All that I have is because of you. All that I ever will be is because of you. I'm not here just to say, I'm here to fellowship. I'm here to worship and to worship you only. Too much is given, much is required. Folks say, well, the pastor didn't preach this morning. I hope you don't say that when you leave. <laughs> or the choir didn't sing. It's not about the choir. It's not about the preacher. It's about you. What have you contributed to the service? If you brought nothing, you'll receive nothing. But if you brought something, you'll get something. You don't have a witness? What have you brought this morning? Have you brought praises? I can't hear you. Have you brought praises? Have you brought gratitude? Have you brought thanksgiving? What have you brought this morning? What have you brought? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the door. When you walk through those doors, you ought to come in with a praise. Not begrudgingly, see, now let me be honest with you. When I was growing up, I, I feel like preaching, you know, this little boy, he'll find out later on. When I was growing up, I didn't want to go to church. I mean, I know, I know you folk always wanted to be here. <laughs> Do we have to go to church again? <laughs> but now I'm mature. I can't wait till Sunday morning. I've been through some stuff during the course of the week. I can't wait to get here. Anybody anxious to be here? Thankful to be Anybody here? Anybody here? Anybody here? And I want to be around some praises. When I come out sitting next to somebody, I got to watch who I'm sitting next to because if they sitting there like they mean, mad, and bad, I'm going to move my seat. I'm going to sit down with somebody who doesn't mind praising God. Do you mind praising God? You got a smile on your face. You're a young man. Do you mind praising God? Well, one or two are touching the green. He's in the midst also. So let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. That's why I'm not going to let nobody put my fire out. I've come to worship God, and they're sitting next to somebody. They mean, bad, and looking all upset. Let me move my seat. Let me get around somebody who's here just to praise God because it's contagious. You know, when you work around other praises, it's just like touching the green and you feel something. You know? I got your hand. I feel the hand of God. I feel the spirit of God. I feel the power of God. Let's worship God together. Let's praise God together. Let's acknowledge God together. Anybody here want to hold somebody's hand and say, let's worship. Let's worship this morning. Let's worship. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. God be good to you. Say so. Shake somebody's hand and raise your hand and say thank you. 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 Take some time and meditate. Don't come and just sit and look and observe. But be a worshiper. Something about the Spirit of God that's contagious. To go back to the sports analogy again. Do you like the Sixers? Yeah. Man, I love the Sixers, man. They good. And that person starts talking about the Sixers. Well, that's the way it should be when you talk about the Lord. Do you love the Lord? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, brother, we got the same team. We got the same God. I got my shirt on. I'm praising God. I, I'm fired up. Are you fired up? It's not a 76ers shirt. It's the Lord's shirt. I'm, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Now, the last thing I want to say so you don't get upset, I talked about when I was young, going to church, but also talked about a little bit later on that when I was, you know, like, well, I'm not going to tell you how old I was. But I went to a party. Mm, mm, mm. 
and I wouldn't stop. When they said the party's over, I said, not yet. <laughs> not till I get my last dance in. <laughs> and I didn't sit at the party. I danced, child. They had to walk. Some of you might know the walk. Cha-cha, mambo. Come on, I know you folks are holy. You don't know nothing about that. And I was dancing, but since I was dancing then, now I start dancing for the Lord. Anybody want to dance for the Lord? Anybody want to dance? Anybody want, anybody want to dance for the Lord? Dance, dance, dance. I want the church to be on fire. I want the deacons, the deaconess, trustees, choir members, pew members. So when people come in as a guest, they say, boy, there's a fire burning at Bethlehem. Because you don't know what people are going through when they walk through these doors. Come on, somebody talk. You don't know what people go through during the course of the week. They walk through the doors, so they won't sit next to a cold person. Nothing worse than a cold church. In fact, nothing worse than a cold pulpit. But I'm not finished yet. Nothing worse than a cold pew. Turn to somebody and say, this pew is not cold. Because I'm on it. Anybody got a hot pew? Anybody got a hot pew? Is the fire burning? You can't even sit still. Take a moment. Thank you, Lord. I'm preaching from my heart because I want God to know I appreciate what is done. When I couldn't get here, my desire was to get here. So now since he brought me here, whether the church is full, whether the church is empty, I'm going to give God praise. Yeah. Whether it's at 9 o'clock or 11.15, doesn't matter who's here, as long as I walk through these doors, I'm going to give God praise. During the pandemic, there was hardly anybody in church. But I was coming anyhow. And since now we got post-pandemic, I'm not going to let my praises go out. I'm going to praise God. Now, I don't know about you, but when I leave here, I'm going to say I had a good time in the Lord. I was filled. Don't leave here saying you're angry. If you if you empty, that's not on me. That's on you. The word has been preached. You ought to be filled with the word. Anybody who say, I'm going to leave here full, yeah. on fire, I can't hear you. I'm full and on fire. Stand on your feet and, and say, I'm full and on fire. I'm full. I'm full. I'm on full and on fire. I'm full. I'm full and on fire. I'm full. I'm full and on fire. I'm full with the Holy Ghost. I'm filled. And if you're full, this is the time to come and offer yourself to Christ. Candidate baptism, Christian experience, or by letter. Don't leave here saying, I almost joined. But leave saying, I gave myself anew to Christ. I started all over again. I reconnected with the house of God. I may have moved, but I've never moved away from God. And we all need a place of worship where we can come together and worship God together as a people of God. So somebody this morning, won't you step out on faith and trust God enough to walk down these aisles? Somebody right now, in the name of Jesus. Somebody right now. 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 Somebody right now, somebody right now. Somebody right now, somebody right now. 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 Give God praise with your life. Let my life praise you. That all that I am give you praise. That all that I am give you praise. What would he do, church?
turn you around. Turn. Pick you up. this morning as we share the anointing with oil that you return back to your seat. We are standing on the word of God for in James we read any of you sick let him call for the elders of the church anointing them with oil. Sick not just in body but also in mind. So this morning we take the opportunity to anoint with oil all is a symbol of God's healing. I pray today that you would walk down the aisle and allow the Lord to bless your life, that he might give you the power and the presence to continue on, and that you might also intercede for somebody else, a caretaker, somebody on their bed of affliction, because we know God's a healer. Anybody know he's a healer? Yeah. Has he healed anybody here? And I'm going to ask this morning, before we move into this service, can you give me a mic? I want us just to worship God this morning. There's a song they sung this morning, Anoint Me. Can we sing that song? And I'm going to pass this mic to my brother in Christ, ask him to bless this anointing service. Dear loving God, we ask, oh God, that you just touch right now, Lord. Lord, that you just cover each and every one of us, oh God. For oh Lord, it's you and you alone that knows what we stand in need of. We ask, oh God, that you touch hearts right now. God, you said that, God, this is the word said that he's a heart fixer. It's another word that said he's the mind of a regulator. Loose us right now, God. Break every shackle, oh God, that holds us down, God. Whether the shackles might be mental status, oh God, maybe it's an addiction status, oh God. God, maybe it's someone who lost a job or lost a loved one, God. You know what it is, oh God, that we stand in need of, oh God. Anoint us right now, God. Anoint the oil, oh God. That it will bring change, oh God. And God, that our hearts will forgive. Teach us how to love, oh God. For love covers the multitude of sin. And for this, oh God, we come to trust you, oh God. And seek you, God, in all your righteousness. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask from the back that you would just come around. Please go back to your seat. There will be individuals on either side to anoint you. Won't you please come from the back to the front? Anoint me. We all need God's anointing. Intercede for somebody else. Let the Spirit of God fall fresh on you today. Anoint me. God bless you. God bless you. Un oh, Lord, oh, Lord, me. God bless you. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me.
rest of the year, I will be preaching about fire. And I made a commitment to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that he, if he healed my body, I would give to him all that I have. I'm grateful to God for prayer partners. I have a prayer partner, Deacon Wayne Holliday. I also have some men I've asked to join me in prayer. One of them I'm sitting right here, standing right next to Deacon James Parrish. And I would not ask you to do anything I'm not willing to do myself. So Deacon Parrish, would you place that all upon my head? the church to grow spiritually Amen. that we open to the movement of the Holy Spirit yes, that our worship is not routine but rather comes out of fresh awareness of God's blessings and even though we have an order of service when we assemble we don't know what God's going to call on us to do whether it's anointing of oil whether it's a washing of feet whether or not it's just taking a few moments and giving God praise whether or not it's testimony time, whatever it takes, we want the church to be on fire, that God will get the glory. I was blessed yesterday to be able to go to my son and daughter's home as our grandson went to prom. And that was nothing but the grace of God, because I asked God if he would heal me so I could see him graduate. And even though with family members around, I was just taking a moment as I was thanking God for him, but more importantly, thanking God for his presence in my life. Yeah. And I know, not I think so, I know that God's a healer. Yeah. And I pray that somebody else will know it. Will know it. Will know it. And I thank you once again for your commitment to bring to this church mental awareness, mental health because I want the church to be holistic in every aspect of our lives. I want folk who have been addicted to come here. I want folk who are homeless to come here. I want folk who are going through some problems to come here and find that Christ is the answer. So I pray that you'll pray with me as God moves his church into another direction that we will allow ourselves for the room of the Holy Spirit. So on any given Sunday, you don't know what the pastor's going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I want to be open to the movement of the Spirit of God. Anoint me. Come on, one more time before we leave. Anoint me. Everybody. these flowers to a young lady who has been incredible caretaker for her mother the mother was called home to glory but she's never stopped giving God praise so good to see you this morning these are your flowers I'm going to give them to your husband so he can carry them for you And I want to give these flowers to you for your courage to stand before this congregation of both services and share your story. Now tell to somebody, say, I'm giving you Jesus. We ready to leave? Somebody said, not really. We could stay for another service, but that's going to be next Sunday. Amen. With heads bowed and hearts lifted unto God.
Gracious God, we thank you for the movement of the Holy Spirit this morning, for the anointing of oil, for the word, for the worship. We leave, O oh God, grateful for your presence in our lives. Now may your grace, love, and mercy rest, rule, and abide in our hearts until we meet again. And all of God's people say together, amen, 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 amen. and amen. Don't forget the meadow cooking. Don't forget the brunch for the deaconess. Pick up a copy of the Tribune, get some invitations, invite somebody. <laughs>